Yeah, welcome, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks, Alfred. Um, I wanted to um, ask you to give us an update and your analysis, because I've uh, personally experienced, and there have been uh, a great number of developments mm -hmm. in, in an area that's within the jurisdiction of the International Tribunal into crimes of church and state, itccs.org, specifically around the issue of the genocide of the indigenous population here in Canada with the complicity of the government of Canada, uh, led by the British Crown, led, led by the Vatican. And, and my experience over the last um, little while is that I've, as, as a journalist, I've been a war crimes correspondent for Press TV for about five years. And uh, I've, I've experienced uh, um, reprisals mm -hmm. by the government of Canada, by the, by the Harper government, I'm going to call it. Uh, because of my reporting yeah. uh, on uh, the genocide of the indigenous population here in Canada, specifically, I was requested by Press TV uh, to report on the United Nations excoriating the Harper government uh, for the treatment of the indigenous in Canada. And that's a matter of public record. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, APTN, the Aboriginal People's Television Network, which I thought was like a friendly face, in fact, came out with an extreme ad hominem attack on me as an independent journalist um, and a war crimes judge. Yeah. And I mentioned the International Tribunal into Church and State in my into crimes of church and state, itccs.org, in my reporting, and uh, the Aboriginal uh, People's Television Network, APTN, attacked that. Yeah. And also, I've had to go to my member of parliament, um, Joyce Murray, here in Vancouver Quadra, because a, uh, um, a royalty check of mine from Amazon.com was sabotaged and cut in half by uh, some agents of the Harper government within Canada Post, and there was an investigation there. So could you kind of parse out what's going on yeah. with the indigenous population in Canada, the cover-up of its genocide, what Iran is trying to do mm -hmm. to expose that or press right. TV? Well, it's interesting, Alfred, because many things are coming to a head right now, and when that happens, the true nature of institutions and people tend to reveal themselves. And um, the kind of harassment you're talking about, first of all, has been really intensified on, on me and on other people in our network at the same time. There's more misinformation and outright smears going on against me than I've ever experienced, even as far back as the 1998 tribunal when we first began to bring this stuff out. It's worse now than ever before. There isn't a posting that goes up that isn't immediately attacked by these misinformation artists. That tells you one thing, but when you look at everything else going on, I just returned from a trip through America and Europe, and I was meeting with our local groups in Ireland and America, uh, Italy, uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, places like that. Everywhere I went, I found the same thing happening. People were saying that the church has be, uh, become very... Um, not just nervous, but they've been shutting people down on every front. For example, uh, the John Deegan, who I w visited in Dublin, said that um, he had been having some rapport with one of the local priests. It looked like they were going to budge on certain things. Suddenly, uh, nothing. Uh, obviously, the order came down to stop any discussion of, uh, you know, uh, any of the demands we had that the church, for example, had to reveal where the children were buried, who they had killed in their orphanages and boarding schools. Um, at the same time, last last spring, we found out through a source in the Anglican Church office in Toronto that the Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, had actually written to Fred Hiltz, who's the head primate of the Anglican Church in Canada, after we had come out with 
the evidence from the the mush hole dig, the Brentford Residential School dig, the, the the bits of bones and buttons that we had revealed to the public. Rowan Williams, Archbishop of Canterbury, ordered Fred Hiltz that not a single document related to the Brantford School was to be released. So in effect, the, the Queen's representative, the Archbishop of Canterbury, is ordering a criminal cover-up, uh, obstruction of justice in Canada, as we had gotten close to that information. The, at the same time, in the, among the Mohawk people, there had been, again, a massive divide-and-conquer program going on right at the same time, scaring off elders who had authorized our dig, who were working with us. So in other words, there's an offensive happening all over. And it's evident in what's happened to you and the, you know, these reports from different people. And it's not coincidental. The government's whitewash here in Canada is about to come out this coming spring. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission official report is coming out. They can't have an alternative report. We're in the process of, of posting the real evidence online. We're going to have a counter report with the real evidence and information coming out. So um, it's not surprising this is going on now. And, and finally, you know, the final point, of course, is the, the power struggle going on inside the Vatican itself. There's a faction of cardinals who want Ratzinger out. And at times like that, people tend to circle the wagons and you get these kind of reactions. So I'm not at all surprised. And I think, if anything, it's going to intensify. But, um, you know, we'll see. Right, right. Now, now you, you yourself have just written a... Uh, a kind of a thought piece or an editorial uh, addressed to the people of Iran and asking them for them to become engaged in the dialogue yeah. regarding the uh, genocide of the indigenous people here in Canada. Could you tell us what that thought piece uh talked about and and sort of what your goals are here well it was in response to the coverage uh where you were quoted and and other people on iranian television where there's native elders that are in iran right now uh, iran's taken a position um condemning canada quite rightly for its genocide of natives for stephen harper's complicity in covering that up through the truth and reconciliation commission and other things and um i wrote an open letter to the people of iran saying that we welcome that, we need your help, uh, here's what's going on. Uh, we live in a society here in Canada that shut down any real investigation into this, is, is attacking uh, and even causing the deaths of Native activists like Bingo Dawson and other people we've worked with right here in Vancouver. And so it was really a call for help and, an, and a way to try to reach out and try to get the courts of other countries, including Iran, uh, to look at this evidence and to bring in a verdict about the the guilt of of the Catholic Church, the you know, uh, the Queen of England and and Stephen Harper himself. Right. So, uh, tell us more now about the process that you've started with the uh, international common law courts and yeah. how how that's proceeding. Well, it's proceeding really well. We have uh, five uh, sworn judges. These are people uh, mostly in Europe with legal background, uh, 58 citizen jurors. And um, we are in the process uh, of posting online as of November 1st. We're going to have almost 200 exhibits online in the first case in the docket, which has to do with the general issue of genocide in Canada through the Indian residential school system and the Indian hospitals looking at evidence right up to 1996 when the last school closed and that's going to be posted online in November it'll be uh, there'll be uh, a process of uh, asking the other side to respond we've issued a summons public summonses to 32 officials including Joseph Ratzinger Queen Elizabeth and, and Stephen Harper and other church and government officials we haven't heard back from any of them except one of them uh, John Malloy, who was a researcher with the TRC in, in Canada, and he threatened to get the police after us. He accused us of harassing him. Uh, but he never denied any of the charges that he was involved in a criminal conspiracy to cover up genocide. So it's interesting because they, um, uh, they're doing the usual thing of pretending we'll go away. But what uh, is going to be happening is not only is this evidence going to be looked at and judged, but we're going to ask the people of the world, and that includes the people of Iran and the people here in Canada. What kind of sentencing would you want and how are you going to enforce it? For example, you, we have the right as citizens to say we don't want these churches operating on our neighborhoods anymore if they're not going to guarantee that child rapists are going to be brought to trial. Um, 
you know, we want the stolen land and the stolen wealth returned. We want the children who were uh, buried secretly to be returned for a proper burial. All of these things we issued in a 10-point statement to them back in May to the to the Vatican, and, and again, they didn't respond. So this is a the start of a very exciting thing, actually, Alfred. It's, ask, it's, it's redefining law as something that's actually in the hands of the victims themselves, in the hands of the people, and not in the hands of... Um, lawyers and others who are going to basically find a way to allow the perpetrators to get off, which tends to be the what happens in courts, a little bit of money and they buy their way out of crimes against humanity. Well, that's we're going to make sure that doesn't happen. So it's more than a court. It's it's kind of a, an attempt to reinvent our societies, really, when it comes down to it. Now, one of the, the aspects, looking at the, um, uh, in a way, historic, interview by Press TV of the former uh, national chief here in, in Canada, he mentioned the issue of Holocaust denial here in Canada, which mm -hmm. is a big issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, that, that seems to work hand in glove with the cover-up policy of the Harper government and the cover-up policy of the British Crown, the Anglican Church, and the Vatican. Mm -hmm. So how how can the community and the viewers, do you think, and yourselves begin to break through the deep Holocaust denial here in Canada that which even the indigenous the indigenous community finds to be, I mean, the most egregious yeah. barrier. Well, unfortunately, even within the native world, there's a lot of denial of what happened to them, and because of the level of fear and intimidation happening. Uh, but among the general population as well, the main way is through not only through getting the information, which is easy now. It's been posted up online for a number of years. Uh, Hiddenolonger.com has a lot of the, the hard evidence and the documents showing this genocide occurred and is still going on. And the eyewitness testimonies, like at itccs.org, yesterday we posted... Uh, shots from our dig at the Brantford Residential School, the uncovering of buttons from school uniforms right out of the ground. Um, an interview with an elder, Del Riley, describing, um, you know, the deaths of these children in the school. So the evidence is out there. People have to learn it. But once you learn the information, it gives you responsibility to do something about it. And so at that point, we're saying real enforcement of any verdict has to do with your own personal behavior. Stop paying taxes to these governments, which are obligated to under international law when they're involved in these crimes. Um, withdraw your support from these churches. Stop giving them money. That's the first thing people need to do. Work towards annulling these um, um, concordats the Vatican has with different governments where taxpayers' money, taxpayers money is actually funneled to the Vatican Bank from 173 nations. Those kinds of things have to stop if we're going to have any kind of real recovery. So I would say uh, the w main way to overcome Holocaust deni denial is to, in your own life, show that you understand what Canada and these other countries are really built on, um, you know, and the blood and the, and the murder of, of these innocents over many centuries. And we have to undo that, um, you know, by, by our own behavior. So I think it starts at a level of education and, and personal responsibility. So fi finally, what are your plans uh, between now, say, uh, we're, we're at almost the end of October 2012 and the beginning of 2013, well, and looking forward to 2013? Right. Well, uh, in the fall period now, for the next couple of months, we're going to be posting online the five first cases in the docket of our common law court having to do with the residential schools in Canada um, looking at several examples of schools like for example the Anglican uh, residential school uh, in Brantford the United Church School in Alberni and probably the St. Mary's School uh, of the Catholic to show three examples of these of how these these death camps operated uh, and also looking at a particular case of the murder of a young girl named Victoria Stewart uh, at a United Church school. Um, along with that, we're going to be um, focusing, so in the first set of, of cases, focusing on Canada. The second round in the new year, 
will expand and we'll be looking at the broader question of crimen solicitanus, this law in the Catholic Church ordering priests to cover up the torture and abuse of children in the Catholic Church. Also looking at the cases of uh, the connections between big pharmaceutical companies, drug testing, these other crimes, uh, and the relationship to the churches uh, that, you know, that, that did these crimes. So getting the cases in order, but also uh, working on the ground to set up, uh, uh, gr for example, child protection action groups who have said that they're going to go into these churches and arrest, perform citizen's arrest on known child raping priests. They've already started targeting people like that in New York, uh, in Albany, uh, all th across Ireland. They've already got a list of priests who they know are still guilty of these crimes. So when the police don't act, these citizens' groups will. And um, this is what I mean about it being more than a court. This is a whole process of people reclaiming their societies, their, their law, the, uh, the land, etc. So all of that is uh, working towards, uh, it's kind of like an ever-expanding wave. And uh, I'll be going back to Europe in the spring to, uh, to help coordinate that and to make connections with other courts. Uh, groups in Spain, for example, have said that they want to work with our, our tribunal and the common law court. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a very, very busy time. Now, finally, um, how can people um, become involved and support this process, and how can they stay updated on the process? Well, uh, follow the updates at itccs.org, uh, the information at hiddenolonger.com, but please write to me at hiddenfromhistory1 at gmail.com. Uh, you can uh, join our second round of citizen jurors if you'd like to be part of the common law court. And also in your own communities, uh, former groups that are going to work on this stuff, because this stuff is not a one-shot deal. It's a long-term process of uh, protecting our children and doing justice to those we've wronged. So uh, it requires everybody's participation and knowledgeable participation based on, on the truth that we've gathered. Well, well... Uh... Thank you, Kevin. I, I want to thank you for taking your time out to come today, and we hope that you'll join us again uh, as this process moves forward. I sure will. Thank you, Alfred.